welcome this morning to Coast Vineyard Church. Wherever you are, it's great to be joining with you for church this morning. A special welcome if you're visiting with us for the first time. I'm Rachel and I'm the Children's and Families Pastor here at Coast Vineyard. And I'm Phoebe. I love overseeing our preschool area and also do some work as part of the design and communications team. So, it's Mother's Day. And we thought what better way to celebrate than with an all-in family service. Now, this is a little bit unusual for us. It's gonna be a different format than what we're used to and it won't be our normal, but I think we're gonna have some fun. There won't be a separate preschool, primary or wired video this morning because we're gonna be doing an all-in church together as a whole family. Yeah, so as well as honoring our mums today, we'll be looking at the idea of what friendship with God looks like for us. What we love here at Coast is that we get to engage in this relationship and friendship with God no matter what stage we're at in our lives. Yeah, so as a group of people that values all ages, we love that we get to be church all together, intergenerationally, connecting with God and with each other. Sweet, so let's just run through what this morning is going to look like so you've got a bit more of an idea of what to expect. We're going to enjoy some awesome homegrown worship from some of our really cool Coast families. We're going to have a few laughs with some jokes, and we're going to have some fun with our youth pastor Zoe and her awesome husband Jack. And you never know who else is going to pop in to say hi along the way. Well, we'll also be having some special tributes to those wonderful people in our lives, our mums. We'll hear an encouraging message about friendship, and we'll be taking some time to be still and engage in some prayer together. Cool, so let's kick things off with hearing from some of our people what they like about their mums. I love my mum because she's a great cook and she makes me feel special. I love my mum. Happy Mother's Day, mum. Hope you've had the best day. Thanks for being so loving and caring towards us. We appreciate all that you do. Love you. One thing that I love about my mum is that she's always the first person to encourage, support and cheer me on no matter what I'm doing. I love going for walks with my mum. I love finding starfishes with my mum. I love when she cuddles me. I love my mum's sense of humour. We love you mummy. We love you mummy. I love mummy because she plays music with me. The thing I love about my mum is that she's really caring and looks out for vulnerable people and inspires me to do the same. And something I love about my mum is that she faces challenges head on with uh, determination and courage. My mum is awesome. She is a great drawer and she's great at cooking. I love my mum. Happy Mother's Day to my mum, Lord Britton. I love you mum because you make good cakes. Bye Coast Kids. I love you mum. Mother's Day. I love you because you are willing to do most of the housework. I love how you're so kind. I I and I also love that you my mom. Thank you. I do you bubbles with mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy! love our mummy because she gives us cuddles. We love our mum because she gives us nice cuddles. One of the things I love about my mum is the fact that she believes in me. She always has and she just always does and I am so grateful. I love that about her. I love my mummy because she has lots of good huggles and kisses. She's really helpful around the house and she's kind and caring. She plays games with us like on. The one thing I love about my mum is that she's always there to support us. Hey mum, we love you because you care about us so much and you help us with schoolwork and extracurricular activities. Hey mum, we love you because you make me feel so special and I love baking with you. Love you mum because you are awesome. Love you mum because you teach us so well. Mommy cuddle. I love mommy cuddle. Hey guys, so you just met me, but for those of you that don't know her already, this is my friend Gloria. Oh, hi guys! Wow, weren't those Mother's Day videos cool? Yeah, they were. It's so 
cool to see so many of our Coast kids, even if we can't see you in real life. We're going to be seeing more of those Mother's Day videos throughout the morning. Cool, right? Can't wait! You know, all this Mother's Day stuff has got me thinking about my mum, Phoebe. We always have so much fun together. Oh yeah? What sort of stuff do you guys do together? Wow! When I was younger, we used to bake yummy food together. Ooh, yummy food is always good. And we used to play games together. That sounds like lots of fun. does sound pretty great. And you've done so much stuff together. Yeah, she's one of my best friends. We love to hang out. Isn't it wonderful having a mum that's a friend to us? Oh yeah, it sure is. Hey, did you know God is a friend to us too? We've been learning about friends and having God as our friend in some of our Coast Kids videos. Yeah, we have. God is our closest friend, and he loves us so much. In fact, God says that even when we're lost or far away from him, he'll search and search and search until he finds us again. Oh my! He is a good friend, isn't he, Phoebe? Yeah, that's true, Gloria. You know what? I think I know a story about God searching for us in the Bible. I think it's something about sheep and shepherds oh, and well, us. Well, well, what does sheep have to do with us and God? Well, maybe if you heard the story, you'd be able to figure that out. Oh, how about we listen to the story right now? Oh, yeah, that sounds great. Let's get started, friends. Stories of the Bible, The Lost Sheep. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ah, yuck. They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. Hmm. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he's found it, he will joyfully carry it home. When he gets home, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, Oh, everyone, come here, come here. Celebrate with me because I have found my lost sheep. Yeah. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who returns to God than over 99 others who haven't strayed away. Sheep. I mean, it's just an animal. 
Well, when Jesus told that story, he wasn't actually talking about actual sheep. He was talking about us. We're the sheep from the story. Oh, I get it now. That makes much more sense. Wow. God is a great friend if he would do all that searching just for one last person. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, right? Okay, Gloria, do you know what time it is? Oh, oh, I know. It's time for worship. We have a great worship song from Chelsea, Cash, Dorothy and Sebastian. Cool. Let's get started. Yay! cool mother's day mother's mm. day today happy mother's day i'll take that i'm one. Oh, I yeah she's gonna start <laughs> taking my life no like, it's mother's day it is mother's yeah. day yeah mother of my children and uh my mum's watching out there happy mother's day mum and so my mum as well yeah. we miss you yes <clears throat> uh lots of what well, may well be lots of mums that are, are not with their kids today um because of everything, but tomorrow is a big day tomorrow. No, big can't day. wait. So we're getting the big decision tomorrow on what level that we're going to go into. And uh, so we'll just wait and see. And hope. And, uh, and hope. So, but we do want to see everyone. So hopefully that it will open up and we can actually uh, hang out a little bit more than we have been. So um, yeah, family service today, something a little bit different. So, yeah, a bit of an experiment um, really. Um, and you're in on it. Yeah. Big experiment. <laughs> so um, we're about halfway through, probably by yeah, now. I yeah. reckon. Yeah. So um, a couple of things. Um, can I, I just want to talk about money, and I just want to say first of all that thank you for all of you who have been so so generous and faithful in giving to the ministry of Coast Vineyard Church over this time. It's especially with the uncertainty around perhaps your own circumstances and situation. And you just continue to be faithful and giving and uh and coast vineyard is actually it's doing okay um a little bit you know a little bit of a dip which to be understand uh be understand it but uh we're doing okay i just want to say thank you so much what a cool thing to have you uh believing in you know god's work in this place boy and, and sewing into it that way uh we do have a compassion 
uh, ministry fund as well that many people have been dropping uh, money into that as well. And for those of you that is so, so kind to, uh, to look at your own circumstances and realize that someone else is going to need, be in need and dipping into your own resources to give to, to others. So, so that fund's there, that, uh, that fund is actually growing um, more than we're actually able to uh, use it at the moment. So we do really want to hear of people that are in difficult times to be able to be um, kind to them and, uh, and, and look after them if they're in a, in a pickle. So, and that um, might be you. So if, if you are in need at the moment and we can help, then we would love to hear from you. Or if your neighbours or somebody you know, friends, family, yep. um, you know, anyone that you bump into. Uh, well, not that we're literally bumping into anyone at the moment, but, but you know what I mean. But we really would love to hear from you. If there are people that we can help, we actually have got funding available to be able to help in really practical ways uh, at the moment. Um, and the ways that you can give, just jump onto the website, onto our giving page. There's uh, a section there for giving to the general fund, and there's another tab there as well for the compassion fund. And it's super easy. Follow the links. You've got options there to be able to use. Um, one thing that uh, happened this last week that's pretty cool. Tell me. In terms of compassion stuff. Yes. I mean, we've been hearing stories of people volunteering to pick up people's groceries for you know older members of their community so and that good. kind of thing. But uh, but this week, one of uh, our coasties, Steve. Um, well, actually, for the last little while, he's been connecting up with some people up at Hatfields Beach who uh, got a bit caught out. They are um, kind of lip sleeping rough and are camping up there. Uh, and of course it got really cold this week and so uh, we were able to um, support what Steve was doing really. He'd kind of connected, wanted to make a difference and help them and so we put word out on the Facebook community page and some other people donated just warm, warm stuff. Cool. Um, and Steve was able to take that up to them this week. So uh, a bit tricky at the moment in terms of spending money because none of the shops are really open for us to be able to quickly grab stuff and go. Um, but, but that will change as these levels keep changing and we can do more. So pretty great. Just love that whole uh, heart of generosity and of compassion and of kindness and we just want to do more more of that cool yeah all right cool so what we're going to do now is that uh we're going to hand it over to zoe who is our youth pastor and jack her husband and they're going to let you know a few things that are happening at coast Vineyard church i've got to say tell me they're not looking the same as they were last night Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they were part of the quiz masters team yeah. and uh, they're not dressed in quite the same fashion, but we'll hand it over to them. Okay, over to you, Jack and Zoe. Thanks, Lilies. We decided against coming to church in our fancy dress this morning. Well, that would be a lot of fun coming to church in a fancy dress. Yeah, maybe we should do that one week. Yeah. Speaking of fancy dress, we loved hanging out with you all last night at our big lockdown quiz. We had such a fun time and it was so good to um, see you guys and your bubbles participating and enjoying it. Yeah. Um, a big thank you to everyone who dressed up. You all looked incredible in your outfits um, and we loved seeing that. And a big thank you to Craig and Suze as well for all their hard work with the quiz. Great job guys, we loved it. And if you're sitting there wondering who these two strangers are with the funny accents, then I'm Zoe and I am the youth pastor at Coast. And my name is Jack and I'm the husband of the youth pastor at Coast. But also so much more than that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, on Thursday nights with our youth group, we have been hanging out together on Zoom. We've been meeting at 7.30, playing a game, seeing how everyone's doing and trying to still continue to grow in our faith together over this weird and strange time. We've been meeting um, together to have fun together and learn more about God and we would love it if you're in year 9 to year 13 for you to join us. If you want more information about what that looks like then all my uh, contact details are on our website and I'd love you to get in touch. Um, but we would love to see you there and to help you in your relationship with God, but also to help you connect with other Christians your age and build some good friendships there as well. I'm very jealous. I wish I was in the youth. <laughs> 
Um, so over the last six weeks during lockdown, we have heard some amazing talks, some great speakers, yeah. and we've all absolutely loved it. Um, but if you missed a session, or you just want to listen to one again because you loved it so much, then they're available for you to listen anywhere you want, any time. <laughs> wow. Um, so if you check out um, three platforms, so Apple um, Podcasts, on Spotify, and also on Stitcher, um, you'll be able to uh, listen to the podcast there. You will also, if you head to the website and head to the watch slash listen section and subscribe there, you'll also be able to check them out. Yeah. Um, or if you, it's not necessarily that you want to listen to them again, but you would love to send them to a friend or a family member that you think they might encourage, then that is a great way to be able to do that. And when you subscribe, you're automatically told when the new um, message is released. And so it's really good to do that. So you could pass the pod, some would say. You could pass, pass the, the pod. pod. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, we are so blessed to have such an incredible church family and we loved seeing your um, Meet the Bubbles over the past few yes. weeks on our community page. If you haven't seen those, then join our community page and check those out. But today, we would love it if you could post photos of what you, on your own, or you and your bubble are up to, whether that's relating to Mother's Day or something completely different, but what you're up to today. We'd love it to, if you could post those photos on our community page, or you can post them on Instagram um, and tag Coast Vineyard Church. Uh, if you don't follow us on Instagram, then it's a great place to be kept up to date with what's going on and we also have an instagram for our youth which is at coast.youth and i'd encourage you to follow that as well if you are a young person yes um we are going to take this opportunity like we do usually when we meet together in church to have a bit of a break um, an opportunity to go and chat to people so um, there'll be people talking in the comments so feel free to jump in that but also we're going to play a game, Whoa. which you're welcome to join us. This game is called the five second rule, and it's one of our favorites. Yeah. And Zoe is going to explain very shortly how you play. So the game we're playing is five second rule. The way this works is we will ask you a question. We'll tell you to name three things, and you have five seconds to answer whether you're on your own or in a bubble you can nominate who you want to answer but you've got five seconds to try and name those three things yes so we're gonna ask you the question there'll be a timer and then we'll show you our attempts at answers as well yep ready shall to I, go shall i go first sure okay your first question ladies and gentlemen name three musicals Hairspray, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, Mamma Mia. Very good. Well done. Mm -hmm. No, my musical. You do. Did you guys get it? I can see you all nodding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Name three fizzy drinks. Coke, Diet Coke and LMP. Wow, wow, very kiwi, very I'm, relevant. I'm basically kiwi now. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm asking you the question, sorry. I was just enjoying being a kiwi. Alright, name three sports that use a net. Netball, basketball, football. Yes, very good. I was thinking, do netball, does yeah. netball, yeah, because it's a net. Yeah. yeah. I used to play. Yeah, well Bring done for the, all those that got it within the five seconds. All right. Next one. Name. No, it's my go. You literally just did it. <laughs> all right, sorry, your turn. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Name three board games. Oh, chess, snakes and ladders, and... You're out! That was the quickest five seconds in the world. <laughs> that was like one, two, three, four, five. You need to throw in Mississippi. <laughs> five seconds are up. That leaves that one. This is, I hate this. Two, one to Zoe. All right, fine. Um, name three things that you find in a shed. A shovel, 
a trowel and a wheelbarrow. Very good. Thank you. Hope you guys managed to get it. <laughs> okay. Name three Disney princesses. Jasmine, Cinderella, uh, oh. Belle. Well done. Yes. Woof. <laughs> 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 we got there eventually. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed that game. Last time we played it on Wired, there were a few controversies. Is that the word? So, sorry if you disagree with anything that we just said. Feel free to comment and we will get back to you. Yeah. Please email Zoe at <laughs> Coco. <laughs> Some of our friends over at Kids have been coming up with some great jokes over the last few weeks. So we're going to head over to them and see what jokes they've got and also some other reasons why we love our mums. Hi, we're the Ports. I'm Amalia. I'm Jordi. I'm Levi. And, and, and we're, we're telling jokes all the way from Snell's Beach. Why do we... Um, what do you call a sneezing nut? I don't know. What do you call a sneezing nut? A cashew! <laughs> <laughs> why couldn't the pony sing a lullaby? I don't know. Why couldn't the pony sing a lullaby? Because she was a little whore. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Um, are you ready for my joke now? Sure. What do you call a beer with no ears? I don't know. What do you call a beer with no ears? B. B. <laughs> no. Who's, Who's there? there? Yeah. Yahoo. I'm Yahoo. Yahoo. I'm so excited mm -hmm. to see you. <laughs> what do you call a man with no nose and no body? What do you... I don't know. What do you call a man with no nose and no body? Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's it from the ports <laughs> at the, the beach. beach. Shuck a -bah. Mum, what I like about you is that you're very compassionate. I love you, Mum, because you work hard at everything. What I love about you, Mum, is that you're very patient with us. The one thing I love about my mama is, is her hugs. Alice Ng is the most awesome mummy in the world. I love you for your kindness, your passion, Hard work and you're always so giving. Yes, I love you, mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I love cuddly mommy. Mm -hmm. And I um love mommy. And mommy loves me. Thank you, mom, for being the kindest and best mom ever. Kaper. Yeah, because we can put sprinkles in it and it's so fun. We love, love mummy because she helped us. One thing I love about my mum is she is so selfless. She raised five kids by herself and she made many sacrifices along the way so that we would be uh, loved and grow up well. So thank you, mum. What I love about my mum is that she's super understanding. Hi there. Tabo ya, just want to wish Samantha, my wife, a happy Mother's Day. Best mum to our boys. Can't wait for you to join me here in New Zealand. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. God bless. I love my mum's devotion to her faith and how she always puts family first. What I love most about my mum is her cooking, her advice and her listening ear. So one thing I love about my mum is that she never gave up on me on the times I'd give up on myself. One thing I love about my mum is that she spurred me on to be the creative that I am today. So I owe all the creativity thanks to her. One thing that I love about my mum is that she's always so encouraging. Hi Pete, what do you love most about mama? <coughs> what do you love most about mama? The dog the Yeah, awesome eh? Happy Mum's Day to all the mum, to my mum and all the mums in the church and all the mums into the world, bless them. So good, love a good joke and also hearing what you guys love about your mums. They're so good. 
we're going to now head over to the Iddings household where Chelsea and her family are going to lead us in another song of worship. See if you guys can keep up with the dance moves they're doing. The splendor of the King in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light Cool. Big thank you to Chelsea and Cody and the Ids Kids, Sebastian, Dorothy and Cash for letting us come and worship in your house and worshiping with us and helping us to just to bring our affection to God this morning. It's so good. So good. I um, love you guys and hope you're doing well. And we're just uh, so glad to have you as part of Coast Vineyard Church. Hey, um, here we are. Uh, Sunday again, happy Mother's Day to you. My name's Matt, I'm one of the pastors here at Coast Vineyard Church. And Coast Vineyard Church is it's, uh, it's in a beach community just north of Auckland here. Uh, well, it, I have to say, uh, I have to just hope that the beaches are still there. I haven't seen one for a while, been all cooped up in my house. and uh, But we're looking forward to maybe a bit more beach action um, when things open up soon. So... Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things before we get started. Uh, you may be new to Coast Vineyard Church. If you are, a big welcome to you. Great to have you here this morning. If you'd like to say hi, um, the best way to do that is to go onto our website and there's a, a thing that you can fill out there and just um, say hello and we can uh, send you out some, some stuff about the church if you'd like that. Um, or you could just send me an email at matt at coast.org.nz and uh, we can um, connect that way. So, and again, 
I know people have been saying like, Matt, what's the deal with the beard? It's my lockdown beard and uh, I have to apologize for it really. It's a bit out of control, but um, I saw this meme this week. I'm going to post it real quick because it feels like it's just exactly my situation. That's going to pop up. So that definitely was my body before lockdown, absolutely. And um, But, you know, lockdown has a way of doing weird things to you, doesn't it? So um, my bed's a bit funny. It's sort of white on one side and not on the other, and uh, which it looks like you've spilt toothpaste on it, and which is not so cool, but um, except if I do spill toothpaste on it, then it works really well because it all just blends in. So uh, isn't this cool just having a family service online on Mother's Day and, and such a great opportunity to talk today about how God wants to, uh, to be friends with us. And so what I want you to do, turn to someone near you and say, God wants to be my friend. Why don't you do that now? Oh, if, and if you're alone at home, maybe you could just go over to the window Push it wide open and yell out to the street, God wants to be my friend. What do you think? We'll see. We'll see if you uh, we hear some stories about that. So let's talk about friendship. Do, do any of you have like a famous friend? It's a very weird thing when you hang out with a famous friend. You, you go out somewhere and what you find is that people recognize them and they're coming up and they're always wanting something from them they're like oh can i get a selfie with you oh could you sign my arm and then when uh and then i'll get it turned into a tattoo or uh could you just do a quick recording and just say hi to my wife it's uh but th those people that do that they're not friends they, they just want to to use you or use the famous person for their own benefit. They just want to uh, be able to get their own sort of cred up. That, oh, you never guess who I saw on Saturday night. Look at my photo. And uh, it's just so they can kind of get their own kind of cool status up. But, but real friends are not like that. Real friends are there for you in the good times and the hard times. You know, you know each other so well, so you don't need to pretend or impress or or be uptight and you can just be you, you know, all the good, the bad and the ugly and uh, and you can know that you are loved in spite of it. You can just relax, just enjoy each other's company. So it's important for you to know today that God wants us to be his friends and, uh, and just like every friend, uh, you become friends with God from spending time together. You become friends with God from spending time together. I did a uh, an assessment recently called Strengths Finders. Some of you may have done that. It's quite helpful to know uh, with a bit more clarity about what you're good at and what you're not good at. And uh, my strengths all seem to be around getting stuff done. Uh, but this report that the pops out, it says like, give me some advice around uh, what to do with that. It says, Matt, you've you've got to make sure that you take the time to stop and hang out with your friends. And uh, that was the advice for someone that's sort of wired like me. It's just so important that um, when you're uh, wanting to grow in your friendship, wanting to build your friendship, wanting to look after your friendship, the, the key is spending time with your friends. And it's so important to grab hold of this. That And then God wants to be with us. God wants to be with us. He wants to be with us all the time. Imagine if we prayed as much as we texted, like, or if we messaged people. Imagine that. See, the thing with um, with God is that we can talk to Him whenever and wherever. You know, you, you don't have to close your eyes. It's just to to pray, um, and especially don't do that while you're while you're driving. But. Uh, in First Thessalonians, the, the encouragement from our scriptures, it says, pray all the time. Pray all the time. And God wants to be with us. He wants to be with us in the quiet times. The writer of Psalm 46 encouraged us with this. Said, be still and know that I am God. And God wants to be with us in the honest times. You know, you become good friends by being real. Have you noticed that with your friendships? Whenever you open up about something hard, you just seem to be closer on the back of it. You know, in Matthew chapter 6, 
Jesus gave us advice about how to be friends with God. He says this, When you come before God, don't turn it into a theatrical production. Just find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense His grace. So God wants to be with us in the quiet times, and the honest times. He wants to be with us all the time. But He especially wants, us, wants to be with us in the tough times. You know, you become great friends by going through things together. You'll hear stories of people that have uh, served in the uh, in the military in uh, active service. When they are in war zone places, they are in dangerous places, places where every day your life could be at risk. And they connect in such a deep way with each other through that. Imagine... You know, going through things where you're having to count on your friends uh, with your life every day. And uh, it, those things, going through challenges like that, they bring you closer. And, you know, many people abandon a friendship in tough times and uh, when things get hard. And they, and they can do the same thing with God. But the riches in a friendship come from going through it together. There's this great old hymn that says this. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, and what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So it's so, so key if if we wanted to have the richest friendship we can with God, is to stay close to God in the hard times. Again, in Psalms 55, we're invited to to do this. Cast all your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Yeah, I love that picture of the lost sheep. It's It's a picture of God's deep friendship. You know, that that He looks out for us when we go astray. He'll say, Matt, my friend Matt, is where, where is he? Uh, he's out there on his own. He's lost. He's probably scared. He seems to be making some bad decisions. I need to find him and, and help get him back to safety, help get him back and, and to be with us. And you know that may be you this morning. You may feel a little lost. You may feel a little afraid. You may feel far from God. And... and you don't have to be. God's arms are always open wide for you and he's, he's looking for you, inviting you in, into the best friendship possible. In the Bible, in Proverbs 18, it says this, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And that friend is God. And as we have God as a friend, he's always with us sticking closer than anyone and he's with us and he's for us and it's so important that you grab a hold of that this morning especially if you're feeling far from God God is wanting you to come back into that safety and that place where uh, he is able to look after you pour his love into you and show him just what a great friend he is and look, maybe this morning you may be reminded that you used to be close to God, but things have just drifted. Yet we read, again, there's this great book in the Bible called Job. and uh, But Job went through some hard times. And in Job 29, he said this, he says, Oh, how I miss those golden years when God's friendship graced my home. And you may think of seasons back. I miss those golden years. Well, do you want that back? Well, God's not finished with you. God is wanting to restore that friendship again and, and be in that place of, of knowing Him again. In James 4, 
Again, it says you draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The thing is with that is that God never moves away. It's, it's us that, that tend to move away. But as we come close, we realize that he is right there with us and, and for us. So if you want to get things right with God today uh, and you'd like to talk to me about it, why don't you put a little note on our website. It's just on this contact page there. You can say, hey, Matt, I'd love to chat. Or you could send me an email, matt at coast.org. .nz. It would just be such a delight for me to have a conversation, have a chat, and um, and see uh, and help you get back on track with your your friendship with God. Okay, would love you to do that. So we're going to do something very cool next. I'm going to hand it back to Rachel, and uh, she's going to give us all an opportunity to have a conversation with God. This year in Coast Kids, we have included in our morning time and space to learn how to pray and be with God. We've called this time Conversations with God, and it's a space where we are exploring and learning different ways of connecting with God in prayer. We may use words, we may listen, we may use pens, markers, or paper. We may use our imaginations and we practice being still enough in a really busy world so that we can learn to hear God with our hearts and our minds. So today, we would love to share this Conversations with God space with you and invite you into being still and being with God. We'll be using an imaginative prayer. So find a comfy position for your body. Let's close our eyes because it's so much easier not to get distracted. And let's take a couple of deep breaths before we begin. God, I pray that you will release our imagination and help us to hear you speak to us. During this time together, we open our hands to you, and we open our ears to you. Come Holy Spirit. Imagine with me that you are on a walk with some friends, lots of friends. Imagine that there are 100 of you walking through the countryside, over hills, crossing streams. You are on a nature hike someplace in the wilderness. Imagine that you are feeling very safe. You are surrounded by a group of people and you aren't really worried about where you are headed right now. Somebody is leading you. And you are following the crowd as it walks through a grassy field. Though there doesn't seem to be a trail to follow. Next, imagine that you spot something colourful at the edge of the forest. It looks like a bright spot in the middle of the brown tree trunks and the green leaves. You want to take a closer look to see what the bright and colourful spot might be. It isn't very far away from everyone else, so you leave the crowd of friends just for a moment to take a closer look at what you have discovered. You are walking now, all by yourself as you head toward the edge of the forest. You can still hear the others chatting as you continue toward the bright spot in the trees. However, as you walk, you discover that the bright spot is much farther away than you had thought. You arrive now at the edge of the forest. The bright spot is nothing more than an old, old orange hunter's hat. Bright orange that was left behind by someone a long time ago. You notice that it is stuck on the end of a branch. It looks old and worn out, so you leave it where you find it. As you turn back to join your friends, you notice that they are pretty far off in the valley. You can see them turning a corner off in the distance 
and they head into the forest. You begin to run as fast as you can in order to catch up. But you realize that you are in a bit of trouble as you watch the last one head into the forest. You continue to run fast in order to catch up. But by the time you reach the place where they entered into the forest, they are nowhere to be found. You are alone. You are lost. Imagine that as you stand here all alone at the edge of the forest, you begin listening for voices. Though you can't see your friends, you wonder if you are really quiet and listen hard enough, perhaps you will hear them. And so you wait. You don't hear anything and so you begin to go down a path through the forest. You notice that it is getting darker and the wind begins to pick up. It's also getting colder and the sun is setting. You are alone. You are lost. And it begins to rain. You find some shelter underneath a hemlock tree and you begin to wonder how this could happen. How could you have gotten lost? There are 99 others somewhere in this forest and you are the only one who is lost. You are the one who is alone. What does it feel like to be alone and lost? You begin to shiver and as you reach for some leaves to cover you up, suddenly you hear a gentle voice calling out your name. You crawl quickly from underneath the tree to look around for the voice. Imagine looking up to find that it is Jesus. He wraps a blanket around you to keep you warm. You walk through the woods and come out into an open clearing where the whole group is standing. They had been looking for you all along. They noticed that you were missing and they stopped walking in order to look for you. What does it feel like to be noticed? To be looked for. To be found. What does it feel like to be the one that Jesus came looking for? There are so many things in the world that God loves. Of all the things he loves in the world, the most important is that he loves you. He loves me. He loves you so much that when you are lost, he will come looking for you. What will God do for you if you get lost? When I am lost, he will come looking for me. Let's just pray together as we close. Thank you, Jesus, that when we are lost, you will always come looking for us. Thank you, God, that you are a God who is available to us. And Holy Spirit, we pray for your peace, your closeness, and your presence for all of us for the rest of this day and over this week. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wasn't that good? Thanks, Rachel. And uh, we think you're awesome. It's just so good having you looking after our kids at Coast Vineyard Church. Um, I love it. It's about a third of our church are uh, 12 and under. So that's about 100 and, or 200 kids uh, around there. So uh, we love kids. Hey, uh, if you'd like someone to pray with you, maybe it's about your friendship with God, 
uh, but it may be about anything. It's just if you'd like someone to pray with you, we've set up the ability to do that on Sundays after church. And it may be that you've got a like an injury or an illness, and you'll just love God to heal it. Maybe you're facing a challenge. Something's going on, and you just love to see the kingdom of God break into your situation. Well. You can have a talk and a pray with someone. It's a one-on-one Zoom breakout uh, room, and you just there's a link that comes up on the chat, which will be happening right now, and you can click on that, and you'll go into like a Zoom waiting room, and then Craig will uh, get you connected one-on-one to someone who will uh, pray for you. So such a great opportunity, and I know that as people take that up, that God's going to do some miraculous things and work powerfully in people's lives. So it's going to be people there that are going to be available to pray for you just for the next uh, 10 or so minutes. So, hey, God has invited us to regularly take communion together to remind us of the love that God has for us and, and to remember that God wants to be friends with us. God the Father gave us Jesus so that we could see God and also that we could have friendship with God through Jesus' atoning sacrifice through dying on the cross. So we're going to have communion together. So come, everyone who wants to, come if you can recite the creeds. Come if you can't remember the words to Jesus love me. Come if you've been in the church since birth. Come if you've lost your way a few times but found your way here today. Come if you like to study theology. Come if you like to finger paint. Come if you like tradition and ritual and ceremony. Come if you like balloons and laughter and jumping in puddles. Come if you like all these things and find the wonder of heaven in them all. Come as you are, old and young, just as you are. One family right now, each of you, every one of you, and have a seat right here. You know, on the night of the week before Easter, the first Easter, Jesus and the disciples were sitting in a room around a meal table that was spread before them. And there's probably um, all sorts of things, but there was bread and wine. And they would have been talking about the days together. And Peter would have been talking. Remember how there was that time when I, I jumped out of the boat when Jesus called me and I walked on water. But then I doubted and I started to sink and it was up to my knees, my waist, my neck. And then Jesus rescued me. Matthew, what is it? remember that time when uh, I was working as a as a tax collector, and all I was all I was about was just counting money, ching ching ching, money money money, ching ching. And then Jesus came and saw me and said, "I want you to follow me." And Andrew would have talked. Remember that time when we were, all those people were listening to Jesus teach and. And then we didn't know what to eat. And there was that small boy who gave up his lunch, his, his loaves and small loaves and his fishes. And, uh, and Jesus did this miracle when they fed 5,000 people from that small amount of food. And remember that. And, and, and as they were telling their stories, Jesus would have eventually interrupted them and said, here's another story. So Jesus had bread and wine at this meal. And he told them about it. He said, this bread is the most important reminder that you'll have of me. More than all these stories, this bread is an image of my body. I break it to show you that my own body will break. And I want you all to break this bread so that you all know what's happening to me. And I want you to do it regularly, reminding yourself of me each time and what I have done for you, dying because I love you all so much. The disciples like, okay, wow, Jesus passed the broken bread around. They didn't understand in the same way that none of us understand. And while the bread was passed around, Jesus lifted up the 
the drink and held it there in front of him in midair while everyone fell silent again. See, this wine is a reminder of me, but it is a symbol of my blood that will be spilled when I die. But don't be afraid, because tucked within this is a promise that I will always be with you wherever you go. I will never let you go. Friends, I love you so, so much that even death cannot separate us. And again, Jesus passed the wine around them all. They all took a sip and, and still none of them understood, just as none of us could with honesty say that we understand. And today we share this very same meal that Jesus did with his friends. The bread, the wine, they remind us of our stories of Jesus and what he did for us because he loves us so much. This bread is my body, says Jesus. Eat of it, all of you. And this wine is my blood and within it is a promise. Drink of it, all of you. So let's break bread and share the drink and remember the promise this morning.